Hello, and thanks for using TickBoom, a free service that helps high school students with their math problems. In this video, I'll be taking a look at part B of this three-part question, and it follows on directly from part A, which I worked through in a previous video. So if you haven't taken a look at that video, I'd recommend um, pausing this one and going and having a look. Uh, I'll provide a link to it so that you can just click through, um, because as, as is noted by the wording of this part B, it begins with the word hence, which kind of indicates that we're going to make use of what we did show in part A. So it's kind of critical to make sure that you understand what part A was all about before you can really work through part B. So for those of you who've got your head around part A, we'll now continue on here in part B, which says hence show that A cubed plus B cubed plus C cubed on three is greater than or equal to ABC. And remembering that for all of these parts, we're starting from the point that A, B, and C are all greater than zero. So I'll work through this part B in this video, and then I'll take a look at part C in a follow-up video. All right, so uh, part B wants us to show that A cubed plus B cubed plus C cubed on three that that will be greater than or equal to A, B, C. And remembering that A, B, and C are all greater than zero. And as I mentioned, the use of the word hence indicates that we really should rely on um, what we showed in part A. So we can say from part A, what we know is that A cubed plus B cubed um, will be greater than or equal to a, B, C times A on C plus B on C. And I think the, the key to this question is kind of taking this result and realizing that having worked through it in part A, um, it's actually going to be true for any combination of letters, for any combination of A, B or C. So A plus B cubed will have this result. A plus C cubed would have a similar result where wherever you see A and B, you just put A and C. Um, and same thing with B plus C cubed. So I think uh, acknowledging that, and I'll write them all out, um, kind of then lets us get to a place where we can, we can end up here. And um, I think the key is kind of noticing that there's an ABC in this result and an ABC up here. And we want a cubed plus b cubed plus c cubed. And, and so kind of getting all these combinations and bringing them together, you can kind of see how that might be a sensible way to, to get here. So I'll, I'll write a plus b cubed has this result. Um, similarly, so if you were to work through the exact same um, technique you did in part a, you'd get to b cubed plus c cubed being greater than or equal to, and here we can still have A, B, C, since we've got all of each of the letters once. Um, but now instead of A on C, um, wherever we see A, we want to put um, uh, B. And here, C is the letter that's not over here. So here, the letter that's not over here would be A. So we get B on A, just following the pattern, plus uh, B gets replaced with C, and again, C on A, the, the letter that's not over here. Um, and we can also say that uh, the other combination would be A cubed plus C cubed would be greater than or equal to A, B, C once again. And uh, here, a and A would stay the same, um, but the letter that's not over here this time is B, and then um, B would become C. So B would become C, and once again on B. So I think um, these three results now we can combine. So let's basically add up all the left-hand sides and add up all the right-hand sides. And in doing that, we can hold, we can maintain this inequality. So we could say, uh, therefore, A cubed plus B cubed plus B cubed plus C cubed 
plus a cubed plus c cubed. That's all going to be greater than or equal to a, b, c, a on c plus b on c plus a, b, c, b on a plus c on a plus a, b, c, a on b plus c on b. And we can kind of clean this up a bit because over here on the left hand side you'll see we've got a cubed twice, b cubed twice and c cubed twice. So that we can just write as um, 2 times a cubed plus b cubed plus c cubed. And that's going to be greater than or equal to, and here we can factor out the ABCs. So we'll get ABC times A on C plus B on C plus B on A plus C on A plus A on B plus C on B. And now what I'm going to do, and this is probably something that uh, maybe isn't super obvious to do, but you'll see why it's helpful. Is I'm gonna what I'm gonna do, I'll leave the A B C, but in this bracket I'm gonna pair up, strategically pair up some of these fractions. So um, uh, if if we start with A on C, what would be helpful is to kind of pair that up with C on A, the reciprocal. So we'll have A on C, C on A, and then if we had B on C, we'd want um, C on B, the reciprocal, so that's that there. And then if we have B on A, we then want A on B, the reciprocal. And we kind of can look at these as three pairs of adding up reciprocals. And, and the reason why that's helpful is um, maybe if I just, as a side step, I'll kind of write note in general, um, or maybe I'll just focus on this, but we can extend the result once we realise what's happening. But A on C plus C on A, that if we kind of, I guess, get a common denominator, we'd get, um, after cross multiplying, we get A squared plus C squared on AC. And if we kind of think about completing the square, very similar technique we used in part A, we could, we could go a squared minus 2ac plus c squared. And then if I'm going to minus this, I'll have to add it. All of that on ac, so I haven't changed anything yet. But now what I can do is I can write this as a minus c all squared um, plus 2ac on ac. And what I'll do is I'll just um, divide out the ac, so we'll have a minus c squared on ac plus 2ac on ac would then simplify to 2. And how this helps us is I can actually now conclude that this over here, this sum of the reciprocals, will be greater than or equal to 2 because we've got 2 over here and we're adding to it something that we know must be positive. Firstly because this um, numerator being something squared will be positive. And because A, B and C are all positive, the denominator um, will also be positive. So we've got something positive plus two. So whatever this is, it's got to be greater than or equal to two. And you could um, work through similar algebra to get the same result for each of these pairs. They'll all be greater than or equal to two. And because we know that, if, if, we, if what we've got on the left hand side is greater than or equal to these things, and if each of these things is greater than or equal to 2, then we could replace each of these um, reciprocal pairs with the number 2, and the inequality would still hold. So that's what we can do, and uh, I might just have to turn over to do this. So um, what I'll write is, therefore... Um, we're, we're kind of picking up from 2a cubed plus b cubed plus c cubed. That's going to be greater than or equal to, um, and we'll, have, we'll still have our abc on the outside, but we can replace that with 2 plus 2 plus 2.
So, in other words, uh, 6 A, B, C. Now, if I just bring the 6 down, what we'd get is um, 2 A cubed plus B cubed plus C cubed on 6 will be greater than or equal to A, B, C. And then the 2 on 6 can simplify to become um, A cubed plus B cubed plus C cubed on 3 is greater than or equal to A, B, C. And if we have a look at what we were being asked to show, that's exactly what we were being asked to show. Panic boom! All right, so that's how you tackle that question. Um, uh, I, think, I think the key is really this part here. I think you could, you could probably, once you've made the link between part A, which we're kind of hinted to do through the word hence, so that's kind of, you know you're, you're using part A. I guess there was a bit of a leap required to say, actually, let's, um, let's kind of extend that result to all of the combinations of the three letters. I think that's the first challenging part of this question. But then the next part, the part I think a lot of students might get caught up on, is kind of getting to this point and noting, noticing that you're dealing with three sums of reciprocals and that there's this kind of result that actually I think is worth knowing in general. Um, kind of whenever you see the sum of two reciprocals, instinctively, if you're dealing with inequalities anyway, you can kind of go, hey, I can show that that's always going to be greater than or equal to two, and that might help you. So I think it was those two bits that really were the key to being able to then ultimately get to this result. So hopefully that, that makes sense. Uh, if you found that explanation helpful, please be sure to give it a like. And if you're someone who wants to keep their finger on the pulse with the kinds of questions that other students are struggling with, please be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you can stay in the loop. All right, tick boom.